Okay, so today we're talking about the early republic in Rome. Um, earlier in class, uh, today we, we looked at some of the different people in Rome. We had the Latins, we had some Greeks there, we had Etruscans. Uh, and the Etruscans are going to be the ones uh, that first become uh, the kings in early Rome. So around 600 BC is when the first Etruscan becomes king. And at this point, uh, Rome is growing, and it's growing fast. Uh, it is a city probably about 500 square miles. Um, and one of the things they start doing is they start building temples. Um, and they build them in a place called the Forum. Okay, so this on the right is eventually what it would look like. It's not going to look like this uh, at the start with the Etruscan kings. but uh, So like I said, temples are going to be built there. Uh, but then really what it becomes is a public center uh, and the heart of Roman political life. This is where a lot of the politics are going to happen. Uh, and then this picture is eventually, you know, is now what it looks like. Um, and you can kind of see some things actually. You can see in the background you have the Colosseum here. But really all of this other stuff that you see that is the forum uh, as it appears today. Okay, so here's Tarkin the Proud. Uh, he is the last Etruscan king uh, and really the last king of Rome. Um, and the reason he's going to become the last one is because he is an absolute tyrant. Okay, so the definition of tyrant is one who illegally seizes and controls a government. Uh, and he does this, he, he removes the previous king, um, and he do, what he also does is remove uh, people in the Senate, which we'll get to the Senate in a little bit, um, which are you know, basically people that are contributing to the government. Um, he's very violent, he's harsh, he's disliked by all of these Romans. Uh, so the ones with power, the aristocrats, uh, they are going to be the ones that resent him um, and drive him from power. So in 509 BC, 509, uh, the Romans swear to kill anyone who wants to be king uh, in Rome from this point forward. So Tarkin is removed from power and the Republic officially begins. Okay, so here's a little image for you. Um, now, what this means, res publica, uh, means public affairs. So now the citizens are going to have the right to vote and select their leaders. Now, it sounds kind of like a democracy, but uh, it is not quite that, um, because citizens, of course, are going to be free-born males. Uh, no women or slaves are involved, um, and they are going to elect the Senate. Okay, so um, this is going to be... Um, how uh, the government is going to be run through the Senate more so than anything else. Okay, so here is the Senate in action. Um, now the Senate is going to be made up mostly of, uh, well, it's going to be made up of all patricians. Let me get that word up for you. Okay, so there it is. So patricians are uh, aristocratic landowners with most of the power in Rome. So uh, all of these men would be patricians, um, and the Senate uh, is going to be controlled by about 5 to 10 percent of the population. So these are the wealthy Romans that are um, controlling all of politics, really, at this point. Um, and they believed that it was their birthright, and that's what gave them the right to obtain these powerful positions. Now, the other group of people are the plebeians. Okay, let me write this up here. Okay, so here, here's this word, plebeians, uh, sometimes referred to as the plebs. Um, they are the common farmers and artisans. They make up the majority of the population in Rome. Um, and they simply wanted more power. And they're going to start to get some more power, or some power, uh, but it's going to be a difficult task. Okay, so eventually to get that power... Uh, the Senate actually allowed the creation of a plebeian assembly. So this was going to be designed to be more representative of the people, uh, specifically the commoners. 
Uh, there are usually about 10 of these. Um, and the word you can see is based like tribe. It's, it comes from that uh, in that there were different, you know, tribes and different, you know, we ha you have the seven hills of, of Rome. Uh, you basically have people representing these different parts. Um, but ultimately it's designed to protect plebeians from unfair acts by the patricians because th this was often the case in Rome. Um, and then, of course, to speak on behalf of the common Romans. This is also why tribunes were elected. Uh, now, as time went on, and these tribunes got more involved in politics and had more interactions with the, pr the patricians in the Senate, uh, they started to gain more power. And then they started to identify themselves more with the patricians. Uh, so they are going to start to be less representative of the people and more worried about themselves. Okay, so uh, the next aspect of Roman law was that they actually created a written law code. Uh, and this was called the Twelve Tables. Uh, and it was posted in the forum in Rome so everyone could see. Um, and it, it was forced by the plebeians. And the idea was that all free citizens, patricians and plebeians, would have the right to equal protection under the law. So this is now in writing, so this is going to try to enforce these laws more um, as the plebeians are gaining more uh, influence. Um, the laws also included things about courts, trials, debt, uh, rights of fathers, guardianship, inheritance, land rights. So it's got a lot of things in there. Um, but ultimately, the biggest thing is that it is now desi it is designed to protect uh, all free citizens under the law. Okay, so I'm going to explain a couple key aspects of the government structure. And with these things, it, it's really a combination of a monarchy, aristocracy, and democracy. Uh, so you have a combination here. So uh, with this, you have councils. Uh, you have two of them. Um, I'm just going to kind of write along here. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, you have two of them. Um, and their terms are for one year. Okay, and um, they cannot be re-elected for ten years. So if you're council one year, you have to wait ten more years to be council again. Um, one, the, the one thing about this is that one council could veto or overrule the other. Okay, so this is uh, similar to a monarchy in that you have, you know, although there are two councils, you have a, a small, you know, you really have just one type of person making decisions. Then you have the Senate, which is the legislative and administrative duties uh, involved in the government. Uh, they are, th this is similar to an aristocracy. Uh, they are uh, chosen from the upper class, uh, the upper classes, and they are going to make up the seats or, or, or occupy those seats for life. So their term is for life. So once elected, they are, are there forever. Um, and those seats are to provide continuity, uh, so to, to keep you know things more stable by having them there. Now the assemblies, uh, this is more similar to uh, a democracy. They are made up of a couple of things. The Centuriate Assembly. Centuriate Assembly. Um, which are all citizens, uh, all citizen soldier members. Uh, and the centuries, we'll, we'll get to, into what that means with the Roman army later. Um, and then you also have the Tribal Assembly. Tribal Assemblies, uh, which is really made up of the Plebeian Assemblies. Um, and it's initially going to make laws for commoners um, and then later for the entire republic as it, as it grows and develops. Okay, so again, councils, senate, and assemblies uh, making up the monarchy, aristocracy, and democracy. Uh, the one other thing I forgot to mention about the councils is that they command the army. They, they are going to uh, really direct the government. So they're, they have the most power. Uh, when when it's it is their turn uh, or in their turn, and then finally uh, we have dictator. Okay, 
Now, a dictator is only going to be appointed in times of crisis by the councils uh, and the Senate. So these two would decide um, if, if it is a time of crisis. Uh, for instance, some, somebody's invading. Uh, Rome is under attack. They would put one person uh, in charge that has absolute power. Uh, they make laws. They command the army. They pretty much do everything. Um, but they have a limited term of six months. Okay? So uh, this is the very general structure um, of, of the Roman government. We're going to go into a little more depth tomorrow. Uh, we'll talk about this. Um, then we'll also talk about the Roman armies, wh what they're made up of, how they operate, um, and how they're going to begin to uh, spread this republic and really turn it into an empire. Okay, I'm going to leave you with this map. Um, really just to show you that this is a Punic Wars map, but we're not into that yet. Uh, just to give you an idea kind of where we stand at this point. So we're up to the start of the first Punic War, which we'll talk about later. So really, Rome is going to start out, again, about 500 B.C. is just that little red dot. And then it is the Italian peninsula by about 264 at the start of this war. All right, so hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you tomorrow.